When is it okay to set aside what the Lord has told you to do and take matters into your own hands? Um, that's the question that Saul answers today in our devotion. Um, the chapter we're reading today is 1 Samuel chapter 13. And Saul finds himself in a pretty tough situation uh, in this chapter. They're going up against the Philistines again, um, but this time they are greatly out outmatched and outnumbered. They've just kind of been a pain in the Philistine side, and the Philistines have had enough of it, and they are coming and swinging. Saul has been told to wait for seven days for Samuel to come and to give a burnt offering and to seek the Lord's favor in battle. But Saul's under a lot of pressure here. Um, not only are they outnumbered by this army, but the people are starting to, uh, to leave. They're starting to scatter and flee. And it ends up being the seven days, and it comes, and Samuel's not there, so Saul decides to take matters into his own hands. And he offers up the offering, he does the burnt offering, and does not wait for Samuel. Of course, directly after he finishes, Samuel arrives. Um, Saul immediately begins to make excuses, and he has all these reasons for why he didn't listen to what Samuel had told him that God wanted him to do. Samuel's response to Saul is so important um, because he could have said, wow, you know, I see you have all these reasons. I understand you were under a lot of pressure and you didn't think I was coming and, you know, people were leaving. You, you had to do it, Saul. I, I understand why you did it. No. He basically just says you should have been obedient. You should have just trusted in what God had told you to do. And then God would have established you as your kingdom, your lineage f forever. That would have happened. But instead, because you were you disobeyed, because you didn't trust God, God has sought somebody else who's going to replace you. He sought for him a man after his own heart. Um, and literally it just means someone who's going to do what pleases him. He sought for him a man who's going to be obedient, who's going to trust him. And it was so important. For Israel to have a king that trusted God and would be obedient because God wanted all people to be that way. He wanted Israel to be a people that trusted him, that were obedient. And if the king didn't trust God, the people were not going to trust God. We can't let our situation determine whether or not we're going to be obedient to God or not. He calls us to trust him and to live in obedience because of that trust. Really, any time we sin, what we've done is decided that what God says isn't good enough. We're going to take matters into our own hands. A little while after this, one of the other kings of Israel, Solomon, is going to write, uh, Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him. Acknowledge God, and he will make your pathways straight. For us, I think that means a daily process of learning God's word and knowing what he wants us to do, first of all, and being proactive in being obedient to what we learn out of God's word, God's word we have to do. So when we come into those situations, uh, we've already had our faith strengthened because we've lived in obedience to what God has taught us. And so uh, I want to be a person after God's own heart. I want to know his word, and I want to live in obedience to what he's called me to do.